I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix, everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Invincible Iron Man issue number six. Riri Williams must face some important decisions that will define her life as a superhero in the Marvel Universe. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Okay then, so more or less picking up from where the last issue left off, Pepper has brought young Riri to Stark Industries and she is absolutely losing it over all the cool armors that Tony just sort of leaves hanging around. And I mean, yeah, of course they're cool. She built her costume in a dorm room with a box of scraps. Now, the three people who are currently running Stark Industries, that being Tony's mom, Pepper, and MJ, have quite the offer for young Riri, and that is come work with them in the building. That way they can keep an eye on her, help foster her growth, and help make sure she's living up to all the potential that Tony thought she could when he was alive. Honestly, it's a pretty good pitch. They're also offering to help teach her the finer points of managing the social minefield of being a public superhero. You see, the news media has finally caught wind of there being a new iron person running around and they're absolutely going crazy with conspiracy theories. The most interesting bit being that this new iron character was created by Tony Stark to help deflect criticism from him that he suffered during the events of Civil War II. In short, Riri's not exactly sure what she should do with herself right now. Yeah, she would love to go work at Stark Industries, but at the same time, you know, she's not used to things going this well for her, and really, when she stops and thinks about it, she wants to be her own person, not just Tony Jr. It's at that point, a head of MIT ends up showing up at Riri's house, which is pretty terrifying, considering everyone thinks that this person is going to want to claim the Iron Man armor for themselves. Because, well, she did technically build her suit while she was a student at MIT under their roof with their box of scraps, so they could easily take her to court if they wanted. Only the conversation actually ends up going the other way completely, the MIT lady actually wants Riri to come back to school. She can't exactly prove that she's Ironheart or anything, but she has a pretty good feeling, and she knows if there is a Tony Stark-level person hanging out at their school, doing work, making breakthroughs, it can only make MIT look awesome. They are also willing to give her her own lab and research funds. So, all things considered, everything is coming up Riri, wouldn't you agree? Where things aren't doing so well is over in Latveria. The nation is still in a state of constant civil war following Doctor Doom's advocation of the throne. And because nature abhors a vacuum, Lucia von Barbis has returned to her native homeland to try and claim it for herself. Don't remember this character? Well, she was another Bendis creation. 2004, I believe, in a secret warrior story. Basically, she was democratically elected to be the prime minister of Latveria for a bit. But she was being backed by a corrupt cabal of American officials, and as such was also smuggling supervillain-style weapons back to New York. Here, she once again seems to be doing the bidding of an evil, shadowy American who may or may not be the Kingpin. We only see his silhouette, but it's a very Kingpinian silhouette. Back with Ironheart, she's mulling over what decision she's going to make, knowing full well whatever she chooses will impact the rest of her life. To blow off some steam, she decides to beat up a D-list supervillain like the Armadillo, who, man, even Armadillo himself says in this issue, he's he's been having a rough year, man. This beating just so happens to catch the eyes of the champions, Marvel's new premier young person superhero team. Most of these heroes, including Spider-Man, Miss Marvel, and Nova, had kind of already met Riri during the events of Civil War II, and it seems ever since then they've been trying to find her to offer her a place on the team. Because, I mean, hey, what self-respecting young Avengers-type team doesn't have their own young Iron person, am I right? And with that, Ironheart now has three very difficult decisions to make moving on. Invincible Iron Man issue number six ended up being a pretty solid issue. I like what they're building with Riri as a character, where Tony was the life of the party, and up for anything, she, not so much. She's a homebody, she's slow to trust, she's in her own shell, and actually, wow, you know, now that I stop and think about what is the Iron Man suit if not one giant armored shell? The stuff with Lotveri will no doubt come to play a bigger part in what's going on with infamous Iron Man right now as these two books come closer together, and I'm definitely excited to see where that goes. Overall, I think I feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. It was a fun read. If you've been liking this book so far, I most definitely think you'll enjoy this issue as well. So, there you have it, everyone another
another Iron Man book on the books. I hope you liked it. And while I still have your attention, why not check out some of the other videos I have on offer from the channel? Also, if you want to be the first to know when the newest video is coming out from Cave Joel, well, there's no better way to do that than to head down to the description of this very video and follow me on my many social media fades, be it Twitter, be it Facebook, be it Instagram, be it whatever. And lastly, before I go, if you love these videos, you're going to love my podcast. That's the Comic Multiverse that I do every week with Matt. You can listen to the backlog of shows as well as the newest episode over on the Comic Multiverse SoundCloud page. Be sure to check that out. It's a fun show, and I'm not just saying that because I'm on it. And until we meet again, everyone, I've been Cave Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.